Peace. All praise and glory to the mighty most high our creator who is one. None to the left, none to the right, none that are sitting on his right hand of authority. The spirit cannot be seen. The creator tells you if you see his face, you're dead. So how do you see Jesus' face coming for a rapture? Because when you see Jesus coming, you're going to be dead. It's that simple. Here, Exodus 25, the offerings of the tabernacle. And the Lord said to Moses, Who's the Lord? Have we learned who the Lord is on this channel yet? The Lord is the self existing, eternal creator. This is the living God. The Lord is the Spirit of Truth. Okay? The Lord said to Moses, Who's Moses? In earlier chapters, wasn't it said that when, when the Lord was talking to Moses, that he said that you will be as gods to the Israelites? Why is, why is the Creator, if he doesn't want anybody, worshipping any other images or any other gods or anything, would he be telling Moses that I will make you like a god to Israel? Just a question. Tell the Israelites. Okay, who are the Israelites? Israel lights are the elites. Okay? This is why they're light. They're light beings. They are of spirit. Okay? Tell the spirited children of God, the one with the breath of life on them, to bring me an offering. Wait, what? Hold on. Bring who an offering now? Who are we bringing an offering to? The Creator plainly says in plenty of books that offerings are a sin or incense is an abomination to Him. Have I not had enough of the uh, fat of ram? Your offerings mean nothing to me. It's better for you to do righteous. Then to offer up a sacrifice is what the Lord says. So now we got to ask, who is this Lord that is asking Moses to bring me an offering? Clearly it can't be the Spirit of God because the Spirit of God doesn't need anything from anybody. Okay, and I tell people throughout this story that duality exists inside the Bible. You have two Adams, you have two Jesuses, and clearly... There's two Moseses that are going on here as we get into the later chapters. You'll see in chapter 33, if you'd like to go ahead and jump up there and read chapter 33, then I would suggest you do so. You'll see that the Lord, this Lord here, sits with Moses face to face as one sits with the friend. But then the same Lord says that no one can see my face and live. So you have one that's sitting face to face. God says no one can see his face and live. And then you got one, that the Lord, that's saying that, you know, I'll place you in the cleft of a rock. And when my glory and I pass by, I will raise my hand. And after I've passed by, I'll remove my hand so that you may see my back. For no one can see my face and live. So I don't know what Lord this is that's telling the Israelites right now to bring me an offering. This would be a um, contradiction. Okay, you can find, if you want, go Google um, what God thinks about sacrifice. Just Google it. What God thinks about sacrifice. You know, you're going to get a whole bunch of sacrifice uh, uh, parables that speak about sacrifice. And all of them are going to tell you that it's not something that God requires. Sacrifice is not anything that God requires. Okay, you are to receive the offering for me, from everyone's heart who prompts them to give. From everyone who's prompted to give. 
seriously, I'm telling you, man, you don't need to give to anybody. This word, as an instructor of the Most High, you should never ask anybody for anything, man. Okay? Unless you're poor ass broke and you don't have anything or you're on the streets or maybe you might want some help or something then. I, don't, I just personally myself, I think the truth, the truth is free. These are the offerings you are to receive from them. Gold, silver, and bronze. Well, none of these things mean anything. Gold and silver and bronze don't mean anything to the spirit, to the spiritual realm, right? What's made up of the spiritual realm is from the Almighty's Creator's imaginary thoughts, for, for His thoughts. We're just thoughts in His image is all we are. This is why we're considered the dead. <clears throat> Blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen. Goat hair, ram skin, dyed red, and another type of durable leather. Acacia wood, olive oil for the lights, spices for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incenses. I just read the other day, the incense is burning incense is an abomination to the Lord. He says it's an abomination to the Lord. So who's asking for these sacrifices? And onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and a breastplate. Then have them make a sanctuary for me and I will dwell among them. Make them tabernacles. If no one... Okay, so I guess when, when he says dwell here among them that he will dwell among them unseen. He will dwell among them and watch. Okay? Make this tabernacle and all its finishings exactly like the pattern I show you. So somebody is showing Moses and the people of Israel that are going to build this for this acacia wood, build the, the ark for the acacia wood, with the acacia wood. He sh he's showing you. I'll show you. I will show you. Have them make an ark of acacia wood. Two and a half cubits long, a cubit and a half wide, and a cubit and a half high. Overlay it with pure gold, both inside and out and make a gold molding around it. Cast four rings for it, for it and fasten them to the four feet with two rings, one on each side, one on one ring on one side and two or two rings on one side and two rings on the other. Then make poles of acacia wood and over overlay them with gold. Insert the poles through the rings to carry it. The poles are to remain in the rings of the ark. They are not to re be removed. Then put in the ark the tablets of the commandment laws, which I will give you. <clears throat> well, this is kind of backwards, don't you think? The commandment laws were given to Moses back in Exodus 20. Okay? The tablet of the covenant are the left and right hemispheres of our brain. This is what the moral laws are on. They're on our brain. You don't need this ark with the tablets inside of them. So you know that this is a metaphor that they're talking about. Because nothing here is going to bring you the uh, understanding that is being transferred to us like data through a Wi-Fi system from another plane of existence. So as above, as below. What's going on here right now goes on above as well. So the tablets of the covenant of the law, okay, which is the left hemisphere of the brain, the tablets of the covenant of the law... What is the law? The law is the Torah. Okay? Also earlier, remember in one of the chapters that I read that when 
Moses was reading a book to the Israelites. See, so whatever book that Moses was reading to the Israelites has been removed from this Bible. Okay? Make an atonement cover of pure gold, two and a half cubits long and a cubit and a half wide, and make the cherubim made out of hammered gold and the ends of the cover. Make one cherub at the end and one cherub at the other. Make the cherubim with one piece with the cover at the two ends. The cherubim are to have their wings spread outward, <clears throat> overshadowing the cover with them. The cherubim are to face each other looking towards the cover. Place the cover on top of the ark and put the ark, the tablets of the covenant laws that I will give you. There above the cover between the two cherubim that are over the ark of the covenant of law, I will meet with you and give you all my commandments for the Israelites. Make a table of acacia wood, two cubics long, a cubic wide, and a cubic and a half high. Overlay it with pure gold and make a gold molding around it. Also make around it a rim, a hand breadth wide, and put gold molding on the rim. Make four gold rings for the table and fasten them to the four corners where the four legs are. The rings are to be closed to the rim to hold the poles used to carry the table. Make the poles of the acacia wood overlay them with gold and carry the table with them, and make it plate and make its plate and dishes of pure gold, also as well as the pictures and bowls for the pouring out of offerings. Put the bread of the presence on the table to be before me at all times. So what do you think? Whatever it is that wants bread on the table before him at all times, wants that bread for it. Because this is a man that's giving, is, is eating the bread of the presence, man. This is a man that's giving instructions to Moses. The lampstand. Make a lampstand of pure gold. Hammer out its base and shaft. And make its flowers like cups, bud, and blossoms of one piece with them. Six branches are to extend from the sides of the lampstand, three on one side, three on the other. Three cups shaped like almond flowers with bud and blossoms are to be on one branch, three on the next branch, and the same for all six branches extending from the lampstand. And on the lampstand, there are to be four cups shaped like almond flowers with bud and blossoms. One bud shall be under the first pair of the branches extending from the lampstand, a second bud under the second pair, and a third bud under the third pair. Six branches in all. Six, six, six. The bud and the branches should all be of one piece with the lampstand hammered out of pure gold. Then make the seven lamps, lamps and set them up on it. Its wick trimmers and trays are to be made of pure gold. A talent of pure gold is to be used for the lampstand and all the accessories. See that you make it according to the pattern shown to you on the mountain. So the same person that's telling him to set the bread before him, the presence of the bread, is the one that has shown Moses on the mountain. Okay, all praise and glory to the mighty Most High, our Creator, who is one God. Blessings be to all the children that serve Him. Folks, repent to God, turn back to Him. Time is nigh here. Now, I've never thought that I'd be the one or hear myself saying that, but it's a possibility this place could plummet into the fire today, tomorrow, or 20 years from now, but I'm, I guess, it's not going, it's, this isn't continuing on, man. Judgment is here, folks. Wake up. This is White Raptor News Ministries.